And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's beautiful. It's November 1st, the first day of the month. And wow, two more months and the year will be over. So what are we gonna talk about today? More Bitcoin price action. We'll take a look at Ethereum. Um, we're gonna take a look at Solana, which is breaking out pretty hard right now. And let's talk about really quick, um, really quick Dixie and the Fed, the pending interest rate decision going to be coming in here in about 15 minutes. So the Federal Reserve has to decide whether they're going to raise rates or not. The Fed officials raised rates at the last meeting from five and a quarter to five and a half percent, the highest level in 22 years. So the Fed's rate decision, um, you know, they, they favored the measure of inflation. So at the last meeting, they said, oh, inflation's coming down. Yet, um, here's what just came in. Okay, last week, the economy experienced an unforeseen boost in gross domestic product, GDP, a comprehensive indicator for the nation's produced goods, uh, growing at an annualized rate of 4.9%. And I believe we also got the jobs data coming in today. And I've been saying it all along. You know, if I was pal, I'd probably raise rates uh, one more time if I really wanted inflation to come down. So November 1st, S&P Global Manufacturing, um, bullish for the dollar. ISM Manufacturing, bullish for the dollar, bearish, bearish. Jolts, the jolts, uh, job openings versus job quits. I'd say that um, this was the more important one. Job openings up 9.55%. So job, the economy is still relatively uh, healthy when it comes to the job market. And remember, the Fed's interest rate decision is based off of two things. They got to keep maximum employment and inflation at 2%. Um, you know, here's just my guess right now is if they do not raise rates, which I suspect they're not going to since the uh, rate hike tool, the CME rate hike tool has been forecasting even a chance of a rate cut. But 99% uh, they're going to keep rates the same. And December is now a 25% chance they get one more rate hike. So are we going to get a Christmas rally in the stock market is the question. Um, are, is it going to get front run? Um, well, I've been saying it all along. Dixie is kind of that harbinger of death and despair or peace and prosperity. Above this box at 109, generally going to be bad for uh, risk assets like the NASDAQ and the S&P and uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Below this box, if we get a rejection here and come back down here, that would look very good for uh, immediate, you know, continuations. Now, I do think if Powell surprises people today and they raise rates a uh, quarter percent, well, um, that would shock the market and send things, you know, a bit in, in, into a bit of a tailspin. Um, so let's jump on to Bitcoin's price action. What has happened since yesterday? Well, I do believe uh, we tagged the liquidity at the top side there at uh, 35,200. I, I believe we said 35.3 was the target. And you can actually see on Ethereum right now, this is Ethereum lifting up, going to tag this little liquidity box here. I almost want to take this little trade here, um, but I am, ah, I was in it to win it. And uh, why not? Open long. Boom. And I will just put a quick little, quick little trade in there because, well, uh, clearly we're going to get a little push up to this next liquidity level. It's actually the 618 FIB. So I'll show you what I'm looking at on the shorter term time frames here. More relevant on a five minute. Um, but it seems to just be working out pretty, pretty, pretty nice here. So where's the 618 coming in at 1807? 
Uh, where's this next liquidity box coming in at 1806? Um, also, the hourly is going to close and remain with a momentum to the upside, which is generally a good thing. And um, yeah, so just just taking a short term stab in for some price action uh, to the upside. Also, I guess five minute time frame. We could get a little rejection and come back down. But needless to say, getting back into Bitcoin's price action, um, what happened yesterday? Well, we had a tag at that liquidity to the upside. That's why I brought that up. The heat map. We saw this bright yellow coming in at 35,250. Tagged it to the upside. Tagged it to the, not quite to the downside yet. So the next level down, 33,950. And I do believe based on whatever the rate hike decision is today. If he greases the wheels some more, which is you know what the market is pricing in right now, i.e. why NASDAQ is popping up. Notice NASDAQ is hanging out in the gap zone. Hanging out in the gap zone and picking up some volume. So looks like um, NASDAQ is continuing onwards and upwards here. You know, we could get a sell off the green 55 one more time, just one more time. But um, I would suggest that volatility is now increasing and volume is increasing. I haven't had a really good read on the stock market, honestly, so I'm not going to get into that one. But I do think that uh, keeping the rates low for longer or is it high for longer? Uh, five and a quarter, five and a half percent, the highest in 22 years just only makes sense if their biggest goal is to bring down inflation to 2%, they're going to have one more rate hike at least, if not more rate hikes uh, in the coming months. But again, for Bitcoin currently, you know, as long as we're closing below this wick right here, this major wick on the four hour, you know, pressure is going to be to the downside and momentum is currently down, but we are kind of rejecting the bearish control zone. Hasn't even dipped its toes in there yet. We had one bounce up and, um, you know, a big red indecision candle. So perhaps taking out the wick to the upside or taking out the wick to the downside. I do think we'll get a bounce off, this is Ethereum, off the green 55 on the first pass. And same thing for Bitcoin. So um, right now that... Uh, would be kind of my, my base case. And again, um, looking for a breakout to the upside or the downside. What does that look like? Well, we've got this four hour massive range on Bitcoin. And what I would want to see myself is something like this, where we break out to the upside, you know, put it, maybe tag this way, come back down and put in a higher low. Some kind of a higher low in this region off support would look nice for some continuation. Um, and see if we can line that up with the liquidity here at 35.5, um, all the way up to 35.850. 35.850, gonna be the line uh, in the sand, so to speak. Let's see what the one month liquidations look like. Do we have any bright yellow to the upside all the way up at 37.4? So usually the seven day liquidity markers are good enough to get a bit of a pushback to the upside and to the downside um, as we saw right there. So if we do come down to 33.9, I'd expect a bounce there first. And how did that trade turn out? Well, it did turn out. It did turn out. And of course we're going for more, going for more. So um, good one there. Just showing you what, what happened on that shorter term time frame is we are tagging that liquidity and probably making a run all the way up for, for this wick. There's going to be a lot of volatility coming in over the next five minutes. So potentially, um, yeah, not a whole lot other mm. than that. Other than that, at this very moment, and just showing you tough market to trade right now. 
you know, Asia market sets the high and the low of the day. Um, UK breaks it to the downside. Uh, coming into the end of the UK session, jams it right back to the upside, putting in a bit of a lower high. And then the US's job is trend continuation or reversal. If we're looking at this on a 15 minute time frame, uh, very hard to see, very hard, very hard to see, very hard to say. And, uh, you know, a breakout above or below this area on Ethereum is probably going to get you that next leg up to this wick here at about 1872. 1872. Um, what is happening now? Well, um, we're seeing that liquidity actually got tagged and a nice rejection on the 58 or 50x, 100x longs at $50 million of liquidity. I would expect actually uh, a decent little pullback from that zone, but uh, don't have enough time to get into that today. I do want to talk about Solana briefly as Solana is about... <laughs> Pretty much the uh, the darling of the market at this point. Solana is the one coin to be moonshotting, moon moonshotting here. And where are the potential targets? Is the question. That's what everybody is asking. When sell? When sell? When sell? Well, the Fibonacci tool is typically. Uh, Going to get those areas very nicely. We're coming into one right now at 43, um, 43 bucks, and some sell pressure uh, perhaps is going to come in here. On uh, you know, it's hard to call these tops. I mean, we we could run to the end of the event. If we do close a four hour back above 44 bucks, I'd be looking for uh, the next level perhaps at uh, 59, but this one is getting extended here over the last, how many uh, weeks did it take? How many weeks? How many weeks did it take? About a month. Uh, let's see. 150% rally off the low, 17 to eight bars so two months not bad for mr solana and they must be really pumping some hard uh cold evidence of infrastructure being built for solana at their new foundation or, or their new at the uh, solana event in uh europe I, I believe it's in amsterdam somewhere and um, i think i'm going to wrap it up with that so solana is the darling of the market right now and i guess i was saying it yesterday on the live stream about solana that there was literally no no like liquidity above so it pretty much once it broke out now it's it's kind of in a, a not a real blue sky breakout but a bit of a blue sky breakout Seeing these massive bubbles, 36 million, I mean, this does tell me pullback uh, incoming for Solana. Um, won't take it much for them to come grab that liquidity down there. And then if we look, $3 billion of liquidity here. I think there's more leverage being put on Solana right now than there is uh, Bitcoin. Let's just check it out. BTC, boom. Uh, leverage got super low um, and open interest got super low. Yeah, we're at the, uh, what are we at? Does it give us a number here? So liquidity, come on, scroll down. So we got all the way up to 4 billion shaved it all off in one candle and now we're up to come on about a billion why is it not 
help me out here. Help me out here. So we're at about, no, that's 500, 548 million versus Solana with all that leverage. That's, that's crazy. So people aren't even, uh, people are running for Solanas. Holy crap, it did hit 44. Picking up more steam as we are talking right now. Is it going to make the run all the way up? And I kind of put this idea out there yesterday. The 236 coming in at 58 bucks. I'm sorry, the 382. Geez, if this thing really just starts to go, I mean, let's lever up Solana longs, Solana longs, and see what we can get done. Um, anyways, I'm going to go take a look at that right now. I hope you guys have a blessed and highly favored day, and I will be back with you tomorrow. Rate hike decision. Is it in? Let's see. We made it for the announcements. 15 minutes into this video. Boom, boom, 8%. Did we get the rate hike decision? Oh, there it is. There it is. It's going to be on the economic calendar coming out right now. Update, update, boom. Fed decision. Jobless claims tomorrow. Twenty-eight minutes. Okay, so nope. Yeah, he kept it the same, and that should pump, uh, give us a little pumpy pump on Bitcoin. But again, we're looking for some breakout levels, and I mean, this does. You know, Solana could be leading the way. I also want to put in chain link here on my new. My other chart was just getting too cluttered with coins, and chain link um, stutter stepping at the moment here giving an opportunity to buy off the four hour green 55, which is your typical bounce zone. Any kind of a formation here, not that I can see at the moment. Um, just wanna hold this green 55 on the level and let's see what Dixie is doing. No rate hike, no major decision there. And remember, uh, typically you're gonna get an opposite reaction. So, you know, wherever they throw it down first, well, um, usually going to be going up after that. And they're trying to trap as many people as possible, take all that liquidity out of the market. And Link, the Link Marines, Link needs to get back in the boat and start rowing. They need to start rowing again because, well, that, that would be um, potentially a local top there on Mr. Chainlink. I want to look at the secondary chart here and see if I'm getting any anything else. Uh, accumulation distribution indicator is up on the weekly hash graph. Uh, hash graph. The hash ribbons are continuing to increase. We're closing above the topside shoulder band on the weekly, on the five day. On the four day, no, four day, about to lose it here in three days. Uh, usually the first one is a fake out. So three days closure, two day closure. Yep, so very similar. First one was a fake out, got one more pump to the upside. And the daily, first one was a fake out, got one more pump to the upside, and then consolidation. So Chainlink seems to be holding on for dear life before perhaps taking a little correction to the downside. Other than that, guys, I'm going to leave you with peace and prosperity. I will see you in the next one. Take care.